If you've spent any amount of time online, you've probably heard of the term neoliberalism. It's a term that's thrown around a lot, to a point where I think its actual meaning has been diluted. You may already have a vague sense of the term, deregulation, privatization, tax cuts for the rich, when the rich get richer, everyone prospers, your contemporary right-wing economics. Although this isn't wrong, it's quite surface level and doesn't get at the heart of what neoliberalism is. So I'd like to take the time to explore what exactly is neoliberalism. And side note, even if you're already quite familiar with neoliberalism, I think you'll still get a lot out of this video. And if you don't, you can always at me on Twitter, at Halim El Ra. We live under neoliberalism. The economic strains of past decades and the growing political unrest we see around us today is the fallout of neoliberalism's failure to deliver what it promised. And neoliberalism's failure shouldn't come as a surprise. We've tried it before, under the name of laissez-faire economics, and it ended with the Great Depression, before being followed by an age of political turbulence. Alright, so, what exactly is neoliberalism? Neoliberalism is a faith in free market capitalism to distribute societal resources most efficiently and justly. There's, there's a lot to unpack here, and, and I promise you we're going to go through it. Free market capitalism is a very pure flavor of capitalism. The generally understood and simple definition is that for a given market to be free, the only forces to be acting within it are that of supply and demand, from which the price of a product finds a natural equilibrium point. As supply and demand fluctuate, so too does the price. Any governmental pressure or collective pressure compromises the market's freedom. This cute definition is a very elitist and bourgeois way of saying that for a given market to be free, the capitalist class must be absolutely free to make unilateral decisions on how they want to run their capital, free from governmental pressure and free from collective pressure. This is how one should come to understand free market capitalism. The idea that capitalists are to be the sole governors over their capital, meeting consumers within the marketplace with their products, from which consumers may or may not buy. Quick side note, the capitalist class is understood as those who own businesses, land, services, productive infrastructure, and so on. In other words, capitalists are those who own the means of production. But from here on up, I'll just be referring to them as the business class. It's just a much more tangible and concrete term, and people's eyes don't glaze over when you use it. Alright, so, free market capitalism. A flavor of capitalism where the business class run their business the way they want. They're free to set prices for their products how they want, set wages for their employees how they want, handle waste as they please, set their own salaries and benefits as they see fit, do whatever they want with profits, and so on. The employees have no place in decision making, nor does the government, nor does the community. What should be noted about free market capitalism is the contrast between the freedom it offers to suppliers and the supposed freedom it offers to consumers. The business class, as we've touched on already, are free to dominate the economy as they see fit, producing whatever they want at whatever price they want. The freedom given to the consumer under free market capitalism is an absolute joke. Sure, the consumer is free to choose what products they'd like to buy, but they don't ultimately get to decide what's produced. Hey, could we get affordable housing within the city? Fuck you, choose one. Hey, could we get affordable medicine? Fuck you, choose one. Hey, could you maybe stop destroying the planet? Fuck you, choose one. So, we understand what free market capitalism is. So why does neoliberalism believe it distributes resources efficiently and justly? The idea is that because consumers are free to choose which products they buy and don't buy, companies unable to produce products consumers are willing to purchase go out of business and free up resources for more adept and efficient businesses which produce products consumers actually want. Hence, societal resources go to companies which produce products people most want at the cheapest prices. Efficiency. This is the idea, at least. In practice, what we find is the manufacturing and distortion of consumer needs via advertisement, monopolies fronting as variation, 
The grotesque price hiking and intentional supply-side hoarding of basic necessities to squeeze out an even wider profit margin from the masses, and so on. Neoliberalism claims to distribute resources justly according to how hard a given individual works. The harder someone works, the more resources they're able to buy. So of course everyone who's rich in our neoliberal age earned their wealth justly because they picked themselves up by the bootstraps and they got to work. Now sure, most of the millionaires and billionaires of our age inherited a majority of their wealth. And sure, business owners make their profits off the backs of actual workers. And sure, wealth propagates itself through the generations by providing undeserved opportunities. But I'm not gonna let you socialist fucks ruin the American dream for me. They worked hard, damn it! On the flip side of this, neoliberalism views poverty as a personal, individual failing. You're poor because you're lazy, too lazy to save, too lazy to get a job, too lazy to help yourself. Want to get out of poverty? Just work harder. Want health care? Work harder. Want housing? Work harder. Want literally any basic necessity of life? Fuck you, work harder. The best way to help the poor is not by actually helping them, don't be fucking ridiculous, but by providing incentives to work harder and whip them out of poverty. This line is also often used to justify the dismantling of social programs. Because as we all know, social programs only serve to encourage the lazy lifestyle of the poor, and it punishes the hard-working wealthy by taxing away their wealth. It's this part in particular I find so absolutely violent about neoliberalism. It's not only a moral justification to let people wallow in poverty, it's, it's a villainization of them as well, a, a condemnation. They're lazy, inept, stupid, and a drain on us all. Their suffering is justified. We, the, the hard-working business class, may enjoy a few luxuries here and there, but, but ultimately we worked hard for our wealth. Don't tax us, or do you want to de-incentivize hard work? Fucking cockroaches. Implicit in these claims of efficiency and fairness is the idea that those who constitute the business class are gods among the masses, the most hard-working, the most intelligent, the most effective, and the most capable of assessing the needs of the people and delivering. So, we now understand what neoliberalism is, a faith that free market capitalism will properly distribute resources efficiently and justly. But how does this translate into policy? So it's, it's actually quite straightforward. All neoliberal policy is centered around preserving and expanding free market capitalism. That's, that's literally it. But let's examine this a little further. First, we'll explore the role neoliberalism ascribes to the state. The state exists solely to maintain and expand free market capitalism. Beyond that, the state has no other purpose. The state shall not, under any circumstances, interfere with the markets. This means neoliberalism is incredibly pro-deregulation. Environmental regulations, labor regulations, pricing regulations, and so on, all must go if we are to preserve market freedom. As well as deregulation, neoliberalism sees to it that all services once provided by the state are to be handed over to the free markets. Hence, neoliberalism seeks to expand free market capitalism via privatization. Additionally, neoliberalism is proudly pro-police and pro-military, as these are the arms of the state used to maintain and expand free market capitalism, dogs of the neoliberal state. Strict enforcement of property laws and patent laws are needed to secure the capital of the business class and ensure the only means of survival for the working class is working. Hence, in any neoliberal society, you'll find a heavy police state. So while the police are to be used for securing free markets domestically, the military ensures foreign markets remain free and foreign investments are protected. Have a pesky Middle Eastern country trying to nationalize its oil? Or a rowdy Latin American country who's forgotten their place and trying to turn to socialism? Do not hesitate to send in the troops. Keep those sexy markets open, baby. Any taxation beyond the necessary funding of free market preservation and expansion tools must be eliminated. As we've touched on before, social programs reward the lazy lifestyle of the poor 
and taxing the rich for these programs de-incentivizes hard work. In other words, these social programs corrupt free market capitalism such that hard work no longer matters and you can be as lazy as you want. Instead of taxing the rich to fund these programs, why not let the business class keep this wealth? Maybe they'll invest in their business and provide more jobs. Or maybe they'll improve working conditions. Or, or maybe they'll raise wages. That's a joke by the way, any tax cut is immediately pocketed. This is a very abstract reason neoliberals and the business class give for wanting to abolish social programs. But the more practical reason is a lot more cold and calculated. Without social programs, the employer's threat of firing becomes a much more potent disciplinary tool. As workers are wholly dependent on their employers for their survival, the threat of termination becomes do as I say or die. As you can imagine, having the working class dependent on the business class for survival means a much more compliant and cheaper labor force. An acceptable form of despotism for the modern age. To protect free market capitalism, neoliberalism takes an incredibly aggressive approach in neutralizing any collective movement which challenges the authority of the business class. This means neoliberalism is staunchly anti-union, as unions infringe upon the business class's ability to run capital unchallenged. Thus, the neoliberal state takes every measure it can to dismantle and suppress collective action within the workplace. Strong anti-capitalist movements, both domestic and abroad, threaten the hegemony of the business class over the economy. As such, pose a serious threat to freedom itself. This justifies both covert and overt state subversion of these movements via the police, military, and intelligence agencies. Instead, neoliberalism would much rather see populist energy going towards fascist movements, which don't actually target the ruling business class, but rather some random minority group or vague haunting specter. In the coming decades of this politically turbulent age, we'll see traditional powers of the business class much more willing to elevate fascists via the media, electoral politics, and corporate funding in an effort to channel energy away from socialism and towards a much more obedient movement. Taking a deeper look at neoliberalism, one will come to see that neoliberalism is founded on the idea that ultimately it's the business class most capable of meeting the needs of the people. Government gets in the way, collectives and the people are too dumb to know what's good for them, and if we want a better society, we better abdicate the economy entirely to the business class. Neoliberalism is an ideology for the business class, praising the business class, demanding submission to the business class. Uh, holy fuck, this was a fun video to make. I honestly love ranting about politics to my friends, and it's kind of nice to put my energy and personality into something and have this little creative piece to show for it. You can support me on Patreon at Halim El Raw and help fuel radicalism on YouTube. You can also follow me on Twitter at Halim El Raw, and you can subscribe for more leftist content.